Well, well. Hello, new decade. Wait, 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 wait. What's wrong with this picture? Oh, yeah. I forgot. New format. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this... 2020 setup video even though I've already set it up I cheated a little bit um, I've done it off camera um, mainly because I've been ill since three days before Christmas <laughs> so I've not really had a Christmas or a New Year's so I've been doing bits and bobs when I could um, hence it's taken me so long to get this video out um, but I'm here now I'm back and I will be releasing videos um definitely fortnightly if not weekly depending on how things go because i was ill i've missed a lot of january and then the last couple of weeks of january i need to catch up on stuff that i really needed to do but i've not done so the last couple of weeks will be my catch up weeks so i won't actually be doing a january spread so I'm just going to dive straight into my February spread in my next video which will actually be in a couple of days um, just pour myself some tea some nice red super fruit tea so let's dive right into why this looks completely different to any other spread um, first of all this is landscape as opposed to a portrait um, bullet journal um, I've actually made this myself as you book binders out there will know this is just simply a text block of my favorite paper um, that I've used <clears throat> um, the reason why I decided to make my own was because as much as I love the Nuvas they're white it's white paper um, and I get a little bit terrified of white paper in the sense that I don't want to mess it up whereas if it's gray or black paper I'll just drive straight in with some color it's like I need to lighten the paper so therefore I'm not afraid of it I've used a gray mixed-media paper which I love this paper and I've printed my own um, dot squared on here um, the, one of the other reasons why I love the Nuva is because the dots are 3.5 as opposed to 5 mil apart because I think the 5 mils are they're just too big and my writing ends up looking really messy and horrible and in terms of like drawing out um, plans and things for architecture the 3.5 is a much better spacing it, when you're trying to draw to scale as opposed to the 5 mil so that comes really handy for me as an architect um, so I've printed my own 3.5 grid on here I don't know if you can see it I'll move to one of the back pages because I print I experimented with the how dark I wanted it so I got a little bit darker towards the end which I think I actually prefer so again another reason for doing my own but the other thing was as well that I had against the Nuvas is the paper's quite thick it's actually quite good it's it's but when I really lay on the ink from just a pen as you can tell it goes quite bad but for like everyday bullet journaling like people that will just use standard biros and things it is more than capable of chalking up to it um, but I needed thicker um, paper especially me throwing inks and hopefully watercolors and even ar alcohol markers at it um, whereas I find this paper I've done a lot of test sheets with this paper so I did a lot of different tests on different papers because I was going to have white eventually at some point then I went to grey a different this is a different branded gray this one though but I didn't like this because th there's more of a texture to this page than the other one that I've chosen and then I was gonna go um, tan colored but as you can see I really experimented like this is gouache paint 
gouache paints that I've recently just been given, which I will do a unboxing video with that later. Then these are the alcohol markers that work really well and don't bleed. Well, it has done a little bit there, but I think that was with me. So here's the gouache. No bleeding. And it very and it barely buckles the page. It is super duper good. Um, marker page. And it's got that through there because I dropped something on there. I can't remember what it was. I think it was methylated spirits or something like that. Something I was messing around with. But yeah. And here is more marker samples. These are the Spectrum Noir original markers. I don't have the new ones. Because I'm still using up the old ones. Um, but markers show up really well. And they mix quite well on here as well. More markers. And then these are my Derwent Inktense pencils. Which I've not used for ages. So I'm looking forward to getting into using all those again. But again, when I was looking for the right types of paper. Um... I went through a whole bunch to try and find what it was that I wanted to use. Um, I even went to black paper as well. Is this the right way up? Yep. Um, and do test examples, all sorts of things on there as well. But for the last six months, I had been using the Archer and Olive um, blackout journal which at first I absolutely loved apart from the fact it was a five millimeter grid um, I'll just put those there um, I will eventually be doing a like a hard cover for this but it'll be like a slip one so anytime I s I'm just about to start running out of paper I can make my own text block take this out and then slip another one in um, and then hopefully at the end of the year I can join them all together to get like one really big sort of fat book um, So that's another plus for me using my own one um, I will also need in up the edges and round off the edges at some point It's just I'm waiting on a guillotine that will cut all slices together. I've tried using it with just a um, uh, A knife, but I just can't get that crisp edge that I want um, I can get the filleted corners really easily, but not the straight edges that I want. But I've left extra space <clears throat> around the edges to take quite a bit off. So, after me rambling about why this, why that, um, let's actually dive into what I have done for this month. Um, hopefully a lot of you recognise this sort of style. Um, it is Charles Redney Macintosh's Art Nouveau style which was just before 1920 and it was sort of the very tip the very beginning of the 19th century but started at <clears throat> sorry it started at the end of the 19th i still get confused when it's like 1890 but it's considered the 19th century it's 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 just like why can't you be the 18th but anyway i digress again um so yeah art nouveau was at like 1890 something I will put the proper dates on on screen um, and then started right at the beginning of the 20th century um, all before Art Deco kicked off because everyone seems to think that Art Deco was the beginning and it actually wasn't it was Art Nouveau that started it all with cinema and all the great stuff that we still use today just a more advanced version so it's actually Art Nouveau that kicked everything off. So I thought I'm best starting off with that as opposed to Art Deco. It's not only the beginning of sort of the 20th century, but it's also the beginning for my architectural career. It's the, Charles Rennie McIntosh is the first person I discovered that I loved and enjoyed their architecture. And, but I didn't really quite know it at that point. Cause this is when I'm like 13, 14. Um, so I didn't really understand it. I just saw him from, I think it was furniture at first and then interior design. And then I realized, oh, actually he does architecture too. So yeah, it's also my first as well as the, the beginning of the 20th century. So it was sort of fitting to be, um, my setup theme for the 2020. 
So yeah, let's dive right in, as I've said about five times now already. Um, so on my first couple of pages, I've got a grid spacing sheet, which is extremely important. I've come to know, because it saves so much time of having to count squares out in things, and especially with me having this very landscape piece. Um, the other, the other reason why I've done this is because I also use this as my sketchbook as well as my bullet journal. And for architects, it makes more sense to have landscape as opposed to portrait. And you might argue, well, what about skyscrapers? But if it's skyscrapers, you just do this and then you get a hell of a lot of stuff. So, <laughs> you know, it's, I think this is a more suitable piece for me myself than having just a wide sheet like this but as I've said this is trial and error for me so time will tell um, and because I have uh, made this myself I've actually printed out the different things I've worked these out on Photoshop and used the um, my own font mixed with a Art Nouveau font and also used uh, graphics and things um, to help me do my first setup like this. Um, yeah, so I've got a gr grid spacing and then I'm gonna do a key symbols and then write my own in. Then on the next pages, we've got uh, just the calendar of the entire year that I can always refer back to. Um, once I cut the edges off, I will put some washi tape at the end so I can quickly flip back to. Um, then here's just a quote page and this is actually the famous sign for the Willow Tea Rooms of one of Charles Rennie Mackintosh's designs. Just take a sip of tea. The next pages is my goals pages um, and I'm going to write out the different things that I want to achieve because this year I definitely want to open my Etsy store um, around about Easter time so there's going to be a lot more information about that as time will go on and also I want to do the ink with me videos that I've mentioned previously um, I want to actually start doing those by the end of January so and hopefully have at least one video a month if not two um, and then the next pages are my future logs, but these are not going to be like, oh, the events and the birthdays that come up because I have Google Calendar. I don't need to waste my time drawing out a calendar just for, um, doing something that I put into Google Calendar anyway, um, or Gmail Calendar, whatever you want to call it. So this is going to be more tied to my goals. Um, so for instance, if I put, I'm going to open my Etsy store in Easter, then March will be definitely preparation month in April, probably the opening date. So I need to w plan my time out and have each month related to the different goals that I want to achieve as opposed to using it for events. Um, this idea came from Shader Cand Campbell, does these beautiful watercolor doodles that I really enjoy and really calming videos. Um, but she she does it, um, she links her future log to her goals as well, as opposed to just listing out dates of events or birthdays, etc. So I have two pages. Um, I have the month at the top, then January, and then quite a bit of space to write in what I want. Um, and again, a little motif of Charles Rennie McIntosh's designs. Um, I might colour these in as, you know, when I just want to sit and do doodle, so I might colour these in different colours see how time will go then the next page is my YouTube ideas page so here I'll be writing down all the different ideas that I want to do this year and hopefully achieve because so, last year I wrote down quite a few ideas of what I wanted to do um, and some of them I did some of them I didn't so Maybe I'll transfer these onto here and get those done this year. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, quite a simple page there. 
Then the next page is my bullet journals idea page. So each month I'm gonna work out the themes of what I wanna do and what I wanna put into each month. Cause each month I want to get more, I wanna give you guys more information about the themes. So like this month I've mentioned it's Art Nouveau. Um, so I wanna do that for each month, but obviously January is a no go. That'll be an NA across there. Um, and then February's I'm just in the middle of doing um, <clears throat> and will be uploaded either one or two days after this one um, depends how long it takes me to edit so that's what that spreads for then the next spread <clears throat> is for my architecting projects um, this year I really want to focus on getting my portfolio not only completed and happy with but I want to like release a portfolio like every five years with different architectural projects um, so I want to do like a 2021 a 2020 this year and then in five years time do a 25 one 2025 one oh god it sounds like so even 2020 sounds like so far away and it's not it's here it's now um, <clears throat> But yeah, I want to finish that this year and then upload it to my website and possibly even, depending on how I do the setup, because I've mentioned before I want to do a lot of pop-up and a lot of interactive things in my portfolio. So I might actually do that where you can buy a copy on Etsy. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how long it's going to take me to make them and also how much it's going to cost me to make them as well. So it might not be cost effective, but we'll see. But also I have some new projects to do this year as well. So I need to keep on top of that. Um, and then the next page and final layout for my 2020 is book reviews because I was so bad last year. <laughs> I only finished one book, one book all year. Um, well, that's not entirely true. One architectural book, but about four um, fiction books. So this year, I'm challenging myself with six books so that's two uh, no that's one book every two months um, and I've started this one today which is the 16th of January um, <clears throat> I'm gonna leave a space here for when I finished it and the date of the blog post relating to the review of that video and how useful I found that book in relation to what I'm researching at the time um, and I want to do that for the other ones as well um, and hopefully I can finish all of these books this year. So that's it for my 2020 setup. Um, it's quite simple, but it's very much related to what I want to do and what I want to achieve this year. And hopefully succeed in everything I want to do this year as well. I've got a lot of things that I want to do for 2020, so I better get on with them. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some useful information that you could possibly use yourself. Um, so in the meantime, happy architecting.